Each day, the challenge of feeding the growing human population becomes more daunting due to the effect of climate change, which highly complicates the task of alleviating hunger. Today, plant breeding is playing a critical role in intensifying crop production on existing farmlands, as plant breeders can now enhance the stability of crop yield, food quality, resistance to pests and pathogens by host plants, as well as adaptation to stressful environments. Unfortunately, as of 2005, Ghana had a few plant breeders and countries within the region lacked the capacity to develop new crops. The West Africa Centre for Crop Improvement, WACI, saw the need to build capacity in developing food crops to enhance food security, thereby influencing its establishment in 2007. Two converging lines of conversation led to the establishment of WACI. In the University of Ghana in June 2007. WACI is a world class center of excellence under the World Bank Initiative that focuses on crop improvement and is housed by the University of Ghana, Lagos. The center's vision is to become the formal center for postgraduate training and research in crop improvement in Africa. And its mission is to develop the next generation of plant breeders and seed scientists needed for the transformation of Africa's agriculture through high quality research, teaching and learning. With the hybrids, you are looking at crossing two inbred parents and it has gone through a, a, several seasons of selfing and before it is crossed. Hybrids are bred in the way that they incorporate in them resistant genes to make them to be more resilient to the climate, drought, to low soil fertility and other important traits that help the crop to give you its maximum potential on the field. Our research priorities are guided by thematic areas. And um, these research areas are informed by engagement with our stakeholders, and our stakeholders are the farmers, the consumers, collaborating institutions and the markets. We at WACI train PhD students at the plant breeding level, and uh, these graduates have released more than 187 varieties with unique traits. These varieties have been registered and are being commercialized across six countries in Africa. This World Bank Center's major targeted crops are rice, maize, carrot, sweet potato, cassava, granite, cowpea, soya bean, and sorghum. Through innovative means, Waki has developed three unique maize hybrid varieties that yield more than 10 times what farmers get in their regular harvest. The establishment of WACI has significantly improved the visibility of the University of Ghana. Uh, WACI has succeeded over the years to train uh, 95 PhDs and uh, very soon there will be an additional 10 also graduating, over 30 master's students. And what is worthy of note is that these students have come from all over Africa. And so after their training, they go back to their countries and we see the multiplier effects. The center offers courses for masters and PhD students, as well as short courses for interested applicants. At the master's level, the center offers Master of Philosophy in Seed Science and Technology, and at the PhD level, the center offers a PhD in plant breeding. I chose uh, West Africa Center for Crop Improvement uh, majorly because I'm interested in uh, breeding crops 
agricultural crops and enhance productivity in Africa. And going by the name of the Institute, West Africa Center for Crop Improvement, their major objective is uh, concentrating on crop improvement and enhancing productivity for Africa. Waki has three labs. We have the Bioinformatics Lab, we have the Tissue Culture Lab, and we have the Seed Science Lab. When it comes to the Bioinformatics and the Seed Science Lab, that is mainly, largely being used for teaching. But then when you come to the Tissue Culture Lab, we have quite a number of research projects that are running. The first one being we have the regeneration of cowpea um, protocols that we are working on. We have also regeneration or, and of um, orchids as well as um, um, roses also. And this is mainly to serve the ornamental horticulture industry. Our labs are state of the art. They are very well equipped compared with any lab outside anywhere in, in the world. For us in the tomato breeding program, um, we are interested in breeding for new varieties that have tolerance to many of the production constraints that face farmers on the field. Examples are diseases such as the uh, tomato yellow leaf curl viral disease, bacterial welt, and to other pests like uh, uh, nematodes. Between 2008 and 2022, the center has enrolled 160 PhDs from 19 countries with 102 males and 58 females. The center has also enrolled 78 MPhil students between 2008 and 2022 from 10 countries with 54 males and 24 females. The enrollment process was pretty simple took the forms, um, the University of Ghana forms applied. Um, after a few weeks or months or so, we got, I got the admission um, letter that stated I had gained admission to the university. Um, then I had to get a scholarship. It was pretty fair, simple. We are beginning to develop African centers of excellence that can attract the brightest students in Africa. So they all run here for their postgraduate education. The scholarship package uh, majorly at working for most of us covers uh, tuition fee, uh, it covers the uh, accommodation, it covers monthly stipend, its insurance, and a travel, uh, travel allowance that's from your home country to Ghana and back. Uh, we have the research uh, allowance included. And with the advent of COVID-19, there has been an addition to the scholarship, which is the digital allowance to help you get uh, some digital gadgets that will be needful in study. The quota is such that the international students get two thirds. So if we have nine students, three will be Ghanaians and the others will be in region students. They will be outside of, of, from outside of Ghana. And this is because we are international center. We, you know, we are training people for the region. Waki has a wide range of collaborators at the internal and international levels. At the internal level, the center collaborates with the University of Ghana, the National Agricultural Research Institutions across Africa, and others. Internationally, the center collaborates with the following universities in the USA. Cornell University, the University of Illinois, Iowa State University, Donald Dunford Center for Plant Science Research, and also the center collaborates with the Erasmus Center for Entrepreneurship in the Netherlands, the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture in Nigeria, and many others. The center's donor partners are with the World Bank, the United States Agency for International Development, the Alliance for Green Evolution in Africa and the German Academic Exchange Service. The total number of publications from the center since inception is over 200 from faculty and students uh, research. And these papers are actually published in uh, reputable journals, journals that uh, scientists globally are yearning to publish in. We have some of them, we have crop science, we have plant science, we have Ephitica, we have uh, theoretical and applied genetics, we have uh, frontiers in uh, plant sciences and many other journals that are 
uh, our students and faculty publishing. So for publication, I can say we are out there and we are visible. We would like to culture banana in vitro. So to do that, first we have to do surface sterilization. And tissue culture is based on the principle that every cell in the plant is able to produce another plant. So based on that, we will take the meristematic cell of the banana plant. And to get to the meristematic cell, we had to take out um, the pseudo stem around the meristematic cell to get to the merit stem. So first we get rid of excess tissue. So now that we've gotten rid of the excess materials, the next stage is to do surface sterilization to kill any bacteria or fungi or whatever um, organism that might cause disease whilst we have cultured it in vitro. So to do that, I go ahead to cut further and then to remove excess material again. Now, I'm going to dip this in ethanol for a couple of minutes. After surface sterilizing it in ethanol, we are going to rinse it with distilled water and then we move on to surface sterilize it in sodium hypochlorite. We'll now keep this here for a couple of minutes and then when we are done, we'll rinse it again with distilled water. Then we go ahead to cut it into smaller pieces. Before I cut, I'm going to sterilize the towels and then the blades with 70% alcohol. Now I'm going to start by cutting away the bottom part. Then I'll cut away the top part just a little bit. And I'll go ahead and then cut it into smaller pieces of about two centimeters. We would culture it in the media in the flow chamber and then from there we move it to the grow chamber where all the necessary requirements, that's the light and temperature and everything that the plant needs to grow has already been calibrated. Agricultural development has implications for changing the game for, if you like, ensuring that there are jobs, um, there are resilient crops which can withstand, if you like, climate change, that um, we use little water because we are using more efficient, if you like, technologies to develop new crops which will not depend too much on, uh, you know, resources. It is not rocket science for our decision makers to understand that they have to put investments in agriculture. If you are looking for a plant breeding center that bears the capacity to manipulate plant attributes, structure and composition to make them more useful for human consumption, think of no other center but the West Africa Center for Crop Improvement.